The method I'm about to show you is a little different. I haven't seen it proposed anywhere else, and that is how to overcome the lack of a common wire when you're installing a brand new smart thermostat. Now, this solution depends on only one thing. You do need a smart thermostat that is capable of utilizing a remote sensor. So if you don't have one of those, this isn't gonna work. But if you do, um, this is an option aside from things like the power extender kit, Nest power connectors, plug-in transformers, running new thermostat wire. Even with thermostats that don't require a common wire, the power stealing method in which the batteries charge on these types of thermostats might not always fully charge the battery. And so even with those thermostats, sometimes it'll throttle back some of the smart features or interrupt Wi-Fi connections, backlight displays, and things of that nature nature. So the method I'm going to show you can even overcome all that. And it's actually quite simple. It's not that complicated when it comes to the wiring. It's almost as easy as disconnecting the wires from your thermostat and just reconnecting them again. The rest of the work is going to be on your app on the phone. So let me explain what this process is, how it works. We'll then get into a couple of situations where you might want to consider if this method is really for you. And finally, I'm going to show you how to do this on a variety of different systems. So here's the method. Here's how it works. Now the real problem we're trying to overcome with all these common wire and power issues is that we're actually married to the physical location of the thermostat itself. And this is because our thermostat has an internal sensor in it which detects the temperature in the area we actually want to control our comfort. So the location of the thermostat is critical in this sense. The concept here that I'm introducing today is that if you have a thermostat that can utilize a remote sensor, what you can actually do is you can disable this internal sensor in the thermostat and you can convert the thermostat to run solely on the temperature detected by the remote sensor. And because the remote sensor operates by Bluetooth, it's essentially a wireless thing. And so what this allows us to do is that we can put the sensor in the location where our thermostat originally is located and this frees us up to move the thermostat wherever we'd like to so that we can move it to a very convenient location where it's extremely easy just to run one little extra wire to hook up a common. In some cases, you can even locate the thermostat right on a unit itself, and so we're only talking about two or three feet of wire here. Now, the first time that thought occurred to me, it seemed really weird to me, but with today's thermostats, you can control them from smart home panels, from apps on your phone, even through Alexa. So this idea that you ever really need to physically stand in front of your thermostat and do much is pretty rare nowadays. If you're willing to step in this brave new world of doing things a little differently, that's up to you. Let's go ahead and let me start showing you how to do this step by step. But just as a quick side note, this doesn't work on steam. That's a different animal. And if you have a thermostat that's controlling two separate systems, this also won't work unless you're willing to separate those systems and run them each off their own thermostat. So if you have two red wires going to two separate R terminals, RC and RH, without a jumper in between, that's what you have. Again, it is a personal choice, that's up to you. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this with my Ecobee 3 Lite and a smart sensor that pairs up with this. You can use any kind of thermostat with this remote sensor. Uh, it doesn't matter how many wires you have, but do watch the video all the way to the end because I am going to talk about a couple of smart features that are gonna be based on different thermostats. So watch all the way through and then come back if you wanna go ahead and do this. So here I am down in the basement. My plan is to relocate the thermostat down here by the furnace. And all I'm doing is here with my phone checking my Wi-Fi signal. Now you don't need 100%, uh, but you do want more than just barely one or two bars. And you also want to make sure that your Bluetooth is activated because we will need that to eventually pair up the sensor with the thermostat. So our next step is we're actually going to download the application we need on our phone to control our smart thermostat. Now, the reason why you want to do this now is because it's most likely going to ask you to go online on your computer, or register on their website and all these other things. Once we start getting into the wiring and all that other stuff, we don't want to stop everything we're doing so that we can go sit at a computer for half an hour. We just want to be ready to go so that we can immediately move on to the next step. And this just minimizes our downtime. Now, step three here is we're going to go up to our old thermostat. We're going to take the faceplate off and we're actually going to take a photograph of the current wiring. Now, for the most part, we're going to rewire our smart thermostat in exactly this same manner. There's only going to be two exceptions. Number one, um, regardless of what terminal your red wire lands on, whether it's RC or RH, on a smart thermostat, you're normally going to hook up to RC. Even if you're just doing a boiler with no air conditioning, you're still going to go to RC. 
on an old thermostat, you might also have a jumper between RC and RH like we see in this photo here. Smart thermostats, they usually have internal jumpers in them. You don't have to manually add this jumper to your smart thermostat. Um, so that is a step you do not need to take. However, there are some smart thermostats out there that might have an external or removable jumper on them. So you do kind of want to flip through the manuals and make sure you don't have one of those thermostats. Now, the reason why you want to go to RC is because these smart thermostats can detect all the wires you're hooking up to your thermostat. So if you have a wire hooked up to W, your smart thermostat understands you have a heating system and in heating mode, it will grab power through that internal jumper off of that RC terminal. Now, with some models, this might not even matter, but I've never had any issues going right to RC regardless. All right, so our next step is that we're going to go ahead and we're going to wire in our new thermostat. So we're going to shut the power off to the system. Um, it might just be a switch right in the unit itself. You could do it at the breaker, but we don't want power on it while we're messing around with the wires. Not so much for safety, but because we don't want to accidentally short anything out, burn fuses, burn out transformers or anything of that nature. So once the power is off, you want to identify where your thermostat wire is coming from your old thermostat going into the unit or the zone valve or the air handler, whatever it is you're working on. So this is my thermostat wire here that goes up to my old thermostat. And my suggestion is, and this is the easiest way to do it, is just cut the wire here that gives you enough slack to hook up to your new thermostat. Now I strongly suggest this is the way you do it for two reasons. Number one, it spares you the pains of having to dive into more complex wiring down on control boards where you may have wiring coming in from other parts of the system. Guarantee you it's probably not gonna follow color codes at all. So unless you really know what you're doing down there, uh, the less you mess with it, the better. Another reason is because if you ever do decide to revert back to your original setup, it's as easy as re-splicing this wire back together again. Now, the third reason why I do suggest you do it like this directly from the thermostat wire going up to your thermostat is because by doing it this way, it doesn't matter what kind of system you're working on. It doesn't matter if it's an air handler, a furnace, a boiler. It's as simple as just reconnecting your old thermostat wires. It just simplifies the whole process. Now, when you do make this cut, you want to leave yourself a little bit of a loop like this. And the reason why I'm telling you to do this is because if you ever do decide to splice them back together, you have enough slack in the wire to do it. If this thing is really tight and taut and you cut it, you'll never be able to splice them back together. Do your future self a little favor there. Now I'm going to mount my thermostat on this panel board here. I'm going to eventually mount the panel board by the furnace. How you want to do this is entirely up to you, but it's something I suggest you do before you even get started so that uh, once you hook this thing up, you're pretty much done. You don't have to fiddle around with much. Uh, again, we're minimizing downtime. So I have my four wires here. I have heating and cooling off of my furnace. And all you need to do is trim these wires back about a quarter of an inch. You don't need a whole lot. And we're just going to wire it up according to the photo we took earlier of our old thermostat with the red wire going to RC. So here's my thermostat. It's all wired up exactly the same way it is on my old thermostat. I have my red wire going to RC like we talked about earlier. And now all we have to do is run a common wire from our unit to the C terminal on our thermostat. Now to run our common wire, we just need one more wire to do it. You can buy 20 feet of 18-2 wire from any big box store for like 10 bucks. Uh, you could probably even find it cheaper than that if you shop around. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take one end of our wire, we're going to connect it to the common terminal if you're working with a control board. So if it's a furnace or an air handler, there will be a C terminal inside the unit. Um, all you need to do is make that one wire connection there. If there's any other wires on that C terminal, leave them on there. Don't remove them. They are for other parts of the system and that's it. You're done with all the wiring. You just go ahead and make your common connection on your thermostat and you're done. Now, if you're working with zone valves as far as hooking a common wire up, you're going to see two red wires. Um, you're not going to touch those at all. That's a completely different circuit. So it has nothing to do with what you're doing today. Um, you will then see two yellow wires or you may even see two black wires. So what you want to do is you want to trace your W wire from your thermostat um, going to one of these yellow or black wires. Right? Your common is going to connect to the other one. So this other yellow wire or black wire, you should be able to trace that back to common on a transformer. And that's where you're going to hook your common up to. 
Now, if you're working with one of these Taco power heads, you're only going to be working off terminals one and two. So that's the top terminal and the middle one. The number three terminal here, that's part of your burner circuit. You have nothing to do with that. So don't touch anything there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to trace our W wire from our thermostat and we're going to see which terminal it hooks up to. It'll probably be terminal number one. But once you determine which terminal your W wire is hooking up to, the other terminal will be your common connection. So if W is going to one, your common is going to two. If W is going to two, your common will be off of one. Now, if you're working off of a relay board, like a Taco uh, zoning relay board like this, uh, you will see a common terminal that you can hook directly up to on the thermostat connections, or you will see a separate common that'll be labeled 24 volts in C. Uh, that is where your common wire were hooked up to. Now, with these kinds of panels, they often come with 1000 watt half watt resistors that they want you to place between your W and your common terminals at the board itself. Uh, they usually come with those resistors if you've long since lost them or can't find them. Uh, you can usually find them online uh, for pretty cheap. You can get a five bundle for like five or six bucks. Uh, but this is why I tell you guys to watch the video all the way through because if you don't want to find out in the middle of this process, you need something like that and it's going to take a day or two to get it. So, just plan ahead um, and that's it you're done there as well now once we have our common hooked up to our thermostat we can go ahead and we can place the face plate back on the thermostat and we can restore power to our system now when we first start the thermostat up it's going to take us through the entire initial setup process it's going to ask you what continent you're on it'll ask you what zip code do you live in your time zone what language do you speak what kind of system do you have is it radiant is it forced air it will ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi and go online. You want to go ahead and do that. And finally, at the end, it will ask you if you want to test your system. You can go ahead and test it now or later. It's up to you. Testing it now would be okay. And once your thermostat is fully functional and ready to go, it's controlling the system. You want to put it in the off position at this point. You don't want to leave it in heating or cooling, especially if you're in an unconditioned space. Um, because if you're in an unconditioned space and your system is trying to achieve a set point, it's never going to get there. Um, and you may find like in heating mode, for example, if you're in a 65 degree basement and your heating set for 70, your furnace is just going to run nonstop and you may end up with an 85 degree house by the time you're all said and done. So we don't want to do that. We'll just leave it off for now. If you need to, you can always turn it on and off manually in the meantime until you finish with the setup. At this point, we want to go ahead on our phone. We want to open up our app and we want to make sure we go ahead and start setting that up and pairing it up with our thermostat so we control the thermostat from our phone. And once you got that set up, we're ready to go ahead and start pairing our sensor. Now, once your app is set up and you're ready to pair up the sensor, obviously the directions are going to be a little different for each type of thermostat and sensor you have, uh, but we're going to be doing this through the app. For the Ecobee here, what it's going to tell you to do is there's a tab here with a barcode on it. You want to go ahead and pull that tab out. You want to leave it down by your thermostat and you want to go ahead and take your sensor and you want to put it up in the room where you plan on placing it. So this is going to be somewhere by your old thermostat. Uh, you don't have to worry about that setup for now. Just leave it as it is and we'll come back to it when we're done with our setup. Uh, but you want to go ahead and do that. Then you want to go on your app. You're going to go to settings. We're going to look for sensors. We will hit that. You want to hit add a new sensor. All right. And we have a smart sensor. So we're going to click on that and we hit, let's get started. Now it's going to prompt you to scan the QR code. We'll go ahead and do that. And once you uh, scan that code, it'll go ahead and it'll start pairing up. Once it pairs up, you want to go ahead, hit next. It's going to ask you to name your sensor right now, just for simplicity. We'll, just label it smart sensor. Uh, you could always go back and change it to the actual location, like the main floor or whatever. Uh, you hit the save name. And now what you're gonna see here are your comfort settings. You see, see home, away, sleep. You wanna make sure all those are checked. All right, so that's gonna be the temperatures that your uh, remote sensor is now going to control. So whatever your set points are for each one of these settings in your thermostat, your sensor is gonna try to maintain them. So you wanna go ahead and hit next. All right, it's going to ask you uh, if it's wall mounted. It's going to give you advice for how to place it and all this other stuff. You want to go ahead and go through that. And when you're done, you hit done. <clears throat> all right, so you can see here, I now have two readings. I have one that says my Ecobee, and that's the actual thermostat itself that we just wired up. And you also have your reading off your smart sensor. 
So what we want to do now is we want to go to your actual thermostat, all right? And we're going to go to my EcoBeat as your thermostat there. And you're going to see the same settings. You're going to see home, away, sleep. What we want to do is we want to uncheck all of these because this is how we turn off that internal sensor in our thermostat. So by unchecking all of these, our thermostat is not actually going to detect the temperature where it's located now. And this is what frees us up from moving it around so that we can easily hook up a common wire. So we're going to go ahead and hit save on that. And that's it. We're done with all that. And now our thermostat is running solely off of our remote sensor and not the sensor in the thermostat itself. Now it does take a little bit of time for these thermostats to calibrate to actual temperature. So it might take 20 minutes or a half an hour or so. So you'll notice here that our thermostat, the actual thermostat is still reading a temperature, but it's not using it. So I'm um, here in the basement. Uh, my thermostat is located down here and I'm reading 64 degrees, but my sensor is reading 69. So that's the temperature of the actual main floor up on the house. And that's the temperature my thermostat is going to run the system off of right there. Now, while you're waiting for your thermostat to do all its calibrations with temperatures, you want to go back to the settings menu. We want to go back to sensors and we want to look for any smart features that are activated by motion tracking. Um, so for these Ecobees, we have smart home and away and we also have follow me. Now we're going to want to keep follow me disabled, but what these are, they're motion sensors that's located in the thermostat. And because we're not placing our thermostat in a high traffic area anymore, we don't want our system to be running off of motion detection. It's not detected. The thermostat is always going to think nobody's home. That's how the thermostat tells whether to be in home mode, away mode, sleep mode, vacation mode, or whatever. We want to go ahead and deactivate that. Now what these motion sensors pretty much do, the whole point behind them is just to kind of substitute your scheduling and programming in a thermostat itself to be a little bit more accommodating if you don't have a regular schedule. So if you're coming and going, you're working weird hours, it's never the same every day, those motion trackers can do a better job of detecting when there's somebody home, when there's somebody not, and adjusting the temperatures accordingly so that we are not heating a home when nobody's home or trying to air condition a home when there's nobody there. So that's really all those settings are. Now you can program all these settings right into your schedule from Sunday to Saturday. If you work a regular schedule, then you don't really need to use these motion sensors. Now personally, the motion tracking, I wouldn't use it myself um, only because if I keep my heat to 65 degrees while I'm at work, but I like it to be 70 degrees when I'm home. I don't want to wait until I get home and activate a motion sensor for my heating system to ramp up to 70 degrees. I want it 70 when I walk in the door. So I would rather just go onto the app, set my temp up to 70 degrees when I leave work, so when I get home, it's where I want it to be. Now, the one thing that's unique about EQB and its smart sensor is that, as far as I know, the smart sensor is the only sensor on the market that has both um, temperature and motion tracking. As far as I know, other sensors are simply temperature sensors. They don't use motion tracking. So if you're doing this without a smart sensor from Ecobee, you're going to want to shut those motion trackers off because it will continue running off of your thermostat that you relocated. There's two options here though. If you really do want to use them, some manufacturers might sell separate motion sensors that you can work into this process, or you could just take a more proactive level um, by interacting with the app on your phone to let the thermostat know when you're going to be away or home. But that's it. That's the whole thing. That's the whole setup. That's the whole process. Um, it's just another option for you to consider. Um, if you're stuck with this, no common wire problem. Just another tool in the arsenal.